And one of the unexpected features is that second Ethernet port. Just right there. This is the sound, well maybe not actually a sound, but this is how 6 Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 are booting up inside Desk Pi Super 6C, a technically a cluster computer that you can build yourself. Hey guys, I originally got the Desk Pi Super 6C back in October, but it took me up until now to actually have a proper video about it, and there was a couple of reasons for that. The first reason was, well, I only had one Compute Module 4 board, and those are incredibly hard to find. But I managed to pull all the strings I had, and I managed to collect six Compute Module 4 boards, and now my cluster is complete. It's not to say that you can't use it with less than six boards, but for the purpose of this video, well, I wanted to show off, right? The second reason was, well, problematic, mostly because it took me over a month to troubleshoot issues with boot from NVMe. It wasn't the fault of the Desk Pi Super 6 C board, but the NVMe drive selected. I already covered all the troubleshooting and everything that you should know about the NVMe boot from CM4, so check out this video if you're interested. First of all, I don't think that Spike could release this board in any more difficult circumstances, because as the board hit the market, there was such a big shortage of Compute Module 4s that was virtually impossible to secure one, even if you were willing to pay extra for it. That means no matter how badly I want this product to succeed, I know people will struggle to justify its purchase. Speaking of buying it, the board costs $199.99 and you probably want to buy the enclosure for it, uh, which sets you back additionally $60. But buying the enclosure isn't compulsory, because if you have a mini ATC board, you could actually slot this board inside, as they have the same form factor. Bear in mind that you'll have to think about cooling solution by yourself, so that is the trade-off. And in my initial video, I complained about how loud this thing was. Honestly, it was like a jet. I not only complained to my viewers, but I also complained to the desk bike, which promptly sent me low RPM fans to install inside the case, and I really hope that's going to be the default solution for anyone buying the case with the motherboard too, because it's relatively quiet, and thermal performance is... well, we're going to talk about that in a moment. But in case you don't want to watch that initial thoughts, I'm going to give you a quick rundown what is this board and what you're supposed to use it for. Well, this is obviously a cluster board. It allows you to install up to six Compute Module 4 boards on it. All of these are going to be connected to the internal power supply, feeding the uh, power to every single board. Each board is going to be also connected to a dedicated either SD card or NVMe M.2 uh, solid-state drive for that really nice and fast data access. In addition to that, integrated 8-port gigabit Ethernet switch allows connectivity. And I know what you're thinking, there are six ports, each one's going to take one port, why do we have two Ethernet ports at the back? Well, it's a good question and actually quite a brilliant solution, because even though you cannot aggregate those ports and make them quicker than a gigabit, there is a very good use case. If you ever need, and that's a big if, a bigger cluster than a cluster of six Compute Module 4 boards, this extra port allows you to daisy-chain the motherboards for the ultimate cluster sandwich. 
or the I.O. is also present. However, there are some limitations to it. There are two USB 2.0 ports and two HDMI uh, ports. Those are full HDMI ports, but they are only connected to the compute module installed in a slot 1. This enables you to maintain and manage your cluster without doing it headlessly. You can simply plug in your keyboard and monitor and start monitoring your cluster. Other I.O. includes a dedicated power socket for PC-alike power supply, so if you're building your own case, you're going to find it handy. There are also three 4-pin fan connectors, however, bear in mind that if you're going to get an enclosure that has supplied fans, only have a two pins to connect, which kind of removes the PWM controls from it. Every single compute module 4 has a dedicated slot with exposed GPIO header to help you set the CM4 board in desired configuration and the micro USB port to program a flash operating system on your compute modules. If you decided to purchase a case, apart from metal case with a nice access hatch for your storage and access hatch from the top for your all modules. It comes with a massive heatsink, which would definitely improve the thermal performance. And the I.O. at the front, which includes the power reset button and two USB 2.0 ports, and slots at the back to fit wireless antennas in case your compute module force come with a wireless network. Oh, by the way, if you look at the side, you'll also notice a screw mounting holes, probably for the rack installation. I already mentioned the fans that could be 4-pin fans that would allow proper PWM controls. If you want to achieve that, you probably have to change the fans yourself. But there are a couple of things that should be included in the case, starting with a designated way to actually power down individual compute modules. As it stands for now, you can only use the power button or reset button, and that will power or reset all of the boards at once. You have no physical controls over the individual slots. Another great feature that I would love to see on this board would be a small display located at the front that helps you determine what are individual nodes doing. You do have six LED status LEDs at the back, but they are located at the back and other than blinking, they won't tell you anything. So that is slightly annoying. When I've changed my fans to the low RPM fans, I was slightly worried that they're not going to be good enough to, well, remove all of that heat generated by Compute Module 4s. When I run my first benchmark without the enclosure, I quickly noticed that um, after 15 minutes of benchmarking, some of the Compute Module 4s would reach the thermal ceiling and, well, CPU would throttle. As you can see on the graph, it wasn't as consistent between different slots, but I think uh, the difference in temperature between slots was mostly due to the fact that I was using different compute modules in different slots. However, once I've put the motherboard inside the enclosure, installed extremely big, oversized heatsink, and locked it, now that thermal performance would paint a much different picture. The heatsink alone were a huge help at dissipating all that heat. Combined with the fact that there were three fans to move the air around and after 15 minutes of benchmarking it I've noticed that the temperature was uh, in between 55 to 60 degrees of Celsius. It's actually pretty good thermal performance all things considered and I was relieved that despite me using raw Alpream fans I didn't heat the ceiling and the device was performing as expected. That's pretty much everything that you should know about the hardware so let's talk about why would you need a cluster. And the truth is, you probably wouldn't. A long time ago, Raspberry Pi Foundation has launched Raspberry Pi 4, and they hosted entire launch on the Raspberry Pi 4 cluster. They've used 18 ports to host the website and managed to sustain the traffic at the level of 10 million visits a day. I mean, that's a very respectful result, and actually, <laughs> it's quite mind blowing. If you compare the performance of that cluster with what I've got in hand, I think it's fair to expect about 30% of that performance being available in that single box. And that got me thinking. I've launched my website five years ago, and my actual server cost of renting the hardware in a cloud to host not enough tech turned out to be more than £5,000 right now over the course of five years. 
And the Naftec is hosted on a modest and quite expensive machine with two CPU cores which are shared, 4 gigs of RAM and 40 gigabytes of storage. This cost me on average 65 to 70 pounds a month depending on how much traffic I get. A modest Super 6C configuration would consist of six compute module four boards with four gigs of RAM each and whatever storage you want to add to it. That would amount to 24 cores, which bear in mind can be overclocked to 2.0 gigahertz easily, six terabytes of storage and a whooping 24 gigs of RAM. I can load the entire website into the cache. And all of that for the mere mm, 850 pounds. I mean, the value proposition is simply insane. And since Raspberry Pi was trusting Raspberry Pi boards enough to launch the Raspberry Pi for launch, I think we can all agree that this product would be more than suitable for me. Considering the fact that I have not yet hit the 10 million visits a day, I think the most popular day so far was about 50,000 in a day, which was mind-boggling, and my server crashed three times on that day. This baby would be able to survive this. Another use case would be home automation. And don't worry, I'm not going to upsell Super 6C as your home automation server. That would be a bit insane. However, there is a use case in there. I'm already running three automation servers as it is. One that runs my automation, second one that acts my development server, and third to kind of experiment and wipe it quite often in case things go wrong. That's already three Raspberry Pi 4 running Nodred 24 7 at 5 to 7 watts each. And when you consider how much um, power the Super 6C draws, is actually pretty reasonable. At idle, with all boards in, it takes approximately 15 to 17 watts and it ramps up to about approximately 40 to 50 watts when you're stressing the boards inside. That's a huge power saving if you're running things 24 7. Plus, it gives you the ability to delegate your tasks better because I could have automation server on one node, then my a database on another, etc, etc. For people like me that are developing new stuff, it makes sense. And I'm sure having a dedicated server for your programming adventures makes sense too. There is a one more wicked use that I have in my head, and that is to use Super 6C as an Octoprint server not just for one printer, but uh, I've made some calculations a long time ago, and if you play your cards right, you'll be able to use a single Octoprint instance per half of the core, giving a processing power for the total of 48 printers from that little device. And that's a massive print farm. Granted, we have a problem of I.O. where we don't have enough ports, however, with developments in wireless printing, that could be a possibility sooner than you actually think. Desk by Super 6C, it's a fantastic piece of kit, especially if you have a, a number crunching idea in your hand. However, due to the fact that the shortages are affecting how, where you can buy compute modules for, it remains a very difficult pitch, mostly because, well, while it's relatively easy to get one of these, chances are you'll struggle for a long time to get all the slots populated. But if you are interested and you have a couple of uh, compute module boards laying around, then the description of this video will contain the links to this board, enclosure and article to follow up on. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, you know I do not have a posting schedule, so if you want to know what's next, you know how YouTube works, I don't have to explain you on that. I do have a couple of social media links listed down below as well, so do check it out, follow me there and start a conversation. Thanks so much for watching, see you next time. Bye!